It is December 2016, and I am in a polyamorous marriage. My wife had been the justified and driving force away from being monogamish to full-on open relationship. And despite the help of a no-nonsense therapist, my ego had spent the better part of a year going through a cheese grater. <laughs> Luck, though, was on my side. I had recently met Chloe, and she had kept me talking for months despite her living in L.A., she insisted I come spend a night with her, and when I said yes, I inadvertently began a two-year-long romance that everyone should have happened to them at least once, but probably not twice. <laughs> it is important to understand that Chloe was totally out of my league. While I could summon some cheap confidence to get through a one-night stand, when it turned into more, I was totally overwhelmed by her impossible beauty, hurricane force personality, and blade-sharp mind. When her birthday happened just three months into us dating, I knew that I needed to come bearing a proper offering. <laughs> Given that the line between dazzle and cringe is razor thin, <laughs> I timidly ordered the most over-the-top tarot deck I could find on Amazon. It was based on Klimt's The Kiss, and despite the obvious cliche, when I gave it to her, Chloe was charmed. Oh, I've been waiting for someone to give me a deck for years. This is so beautiful. How did you know? Can you read? <laughs> no. No, a university math professor who was still chasing tenure could not read fucking tarot cards. Moreover, having dedicated my life to the hard sciences, the very idea of tarot as anything more than just an object for vibe was to me, at least up to that moment in bed, beneath me. <laughs> if my Virgo sun and moon self is good at anything, it is being haughty. But in the process of my wife rightly saving herself from the codependent cocoon, our marriage, had become something in my trauma-built armor had fully fissured. Prior convictions were collapsing, and while self-preservation of old modes was the only thing that felt safe then, I realized if I wanted anything like a happy life with other happy people in it, I had to let those modes go. It was time to start doing different things. Well, I don't know how to read either. We should learn together, Chloe said in bed, holding her new kiss deck. Yeah, that'd be so cool. I've always wanted to learn, too. And I wasn't exactly lying. While math defined my 20s and early 30s, before I grew up, I had been a psychedelic eating teenager with a love of world religions and the arcane. Now 35 and with shards of my ego still scattered about my feet, fuck it, sure, let's learn tarot to impress a girl. <laughs> and I did with all the focus a career academic can bring to a new subject. <laughs> to my surprise, leaning on years of working with students and the emotional intelligence I needed in my evolving polyamorous identity, I got good at reading. Chloe loved the shit out of me for learning, and when apart, we texted endlessly about new things we discovered or cards we pulled and how it had freaked the hell out of us. It became a loving language we shared and a point of stable scaffold in a burgeoning identity that had otherwise been running from a chasing maw of inner darkness. My wife appreciated that I was making a real effort at growth, an artist that she is. She was tickled that I was nurturing such a weird side of myself positive feedback in hand then, I doubled down on my pursuit of more of the occult. And more I promptly found. <laughs> in the process of my academic assault on tarot, I came to learn that the most esoteric and intense interpretations of the cards are largely due to one Aleister Crowley, dubbed the wickedest man in the world in 1923. Likewise, Chloe and I had been frequenting various occult shops and events throughout LA, and I just kept seeing his name over and over again, drenched in mystique. 
Getting an itch, I finally Googled Crowley, Los Angeles, and after a bit of digging, found an event called the Gnostic Mass at some address in Glendale. <laughs> so in February 2018, having no clue what I was dragging us to, we descended a long flight of stairs into a basement, and there we found ourselves in a dark den of weirdos and roses. This was robes and candles, incense and chants, a bit of tasteful nudity, and Greek. It was all cult as fuck, and I was <laughs> baffled. <laughs> Nominal ex-Catholic that I am, though, I felt a glimmer of something rare and beautiful in the performance. I check if the mass happens in San Diego, and sure enough, there is another crew of weirdos with roses putting on this bizarre yet strangely pretty thing. Around this time, Chloe came to certainty about being a lesbian, so she and I lovingly parted ways in the summer of 2019. And while my wife and I had grown in leaps and bounds through our journey in Polly, we did not keep growing together, so we had tearfully and respectfully divorced. But even with all the original impetus gone, I still kept following this peculiar path of spells and sorcery. I eventually learned that the mass is put on by a magical fraternity, the Ordo Templi Orientis, or OTO, which Crowley led up through the 1940s. Besides putting on the mass, the OTO is also an initiatory order akin to masonry, but with an occult twist added. While secret, I can say that these initiations are unlike anything else in modern life. They are put on by people who take them so seriously that they can transport you to places where fear and wonder commingle and form little cauldrons in which inner transformation can occur. Now for me, by early 2020, I am also starting to wonder if I've lost my damned mind. <laughs> Have I let what looks conspicuously like a midlife crisis metastasize into full-on delusion? Okay, I took a couple of these secret initiations, and I had learned enough tarot and astrology to sound charming at yoga classes. <laughs> Maybe it's time to just take my man bun and go back to my faculty life and serious intellectual pursuits. I should mostly be worried about San Diego real estate prices and using my vacation time. Then came the pandemic, and to be fair, like most, I did, in fact, lose my mind. I hear that a lot of folks learned how to bake bread during lockdown. Maybe they got into knitting, binging Tiger King, lots of Animal Crossing. Obsessive guitar practice was my relatable hobby during those long months of isolation. But I also developed an insistence on completing an involved set of meditations and invocations I said each morning tracing out sequences of pentagrams and hexagrams in the air and greeting the morning sun before I had my first bite of food. I structured my days with ritual, guitar practice, lengthy study of magical writings, and keeping up with my day job as a working mathematician. Completed by miles-long evening walks through Hillcrest and Bankers Hill over those long pandemic months, I became a very close approximation to a medieval scholastic monk. I even helped my bestie collect acorns so that he could practice the fasting diet of St. Cyprian, a third century crypto occultist. <laughs> I know folks hear cult and think debauched orgies and mind control programming sessions, but no. We were fighting off squirrels trying to gather winter nuts. because Bestie needed to do it like they did in 285 AD. <laughs> and it's only gotten worse since then. I've got no less than four different ceremonial robes. I've become the leader of the San Diego OTO chapter. I even just went to the national convention where mass was performed by hundreds of sibling weirdos with no shortage of roses. I've led masses and helped new members begin their own initiatory paths. And where I once snorted in derision at people discussing spirits, 
I now lean in politely and ask what tradition people are practicing in, seeing across culture as a continuity of expression and belief that I regard with reverence. So of course, part of the why in all of this for me is nurturing community and cultivating a wider embrace of the human experience. That all of this is so removed from respectable society is also a part of its continued draw for me, and I'll certainly never run out of ideas for new tattoos. <laughs> but those things in of themselves can all be gotten in more straightforward ways. To explain my lasting why that led to my full lockdown conversion and unique path in my order, I need you to know a little bit about one of Crowley's masterpieces, The Vision and the Voice. In it, he recounts a series of visions in the Algerian desert in which he confronts the singular horror that results from the simultaneous experience of the dark recesses of our psyches and the knowledge that space is cold, empty, and vast. Reading it during those long lockdown months, trying to swallow back the lump of animal dread brought on by swirling plague, Crowley's borderline nightmare experiences gave me a template for working with my own terror. This required no bluster nor pretending I could harmonize the virus away. Instead, I came to see my fear as a critical agent for change in human experience. During those miserable months, I had placed myself within a tradition that sees the deepest parts of ourselves from across yawning abysses that we must traverse for our survival, much less our personal growth. In this light, then, I see now how my romance with Chloe and marriage were an initiatory path that had led to a deeper way for me to love through polyamory. And the fears that I have faced during every OTO initiation have formed the expanding image of who I truly am and who I could become. Family trauma, my dread of flying, all of it is now rich with potential, and not because everything happens for a reason, but because all of human experience is latent with power since we have the gift of making meaning. Crowling's magic at its best then is a tool for transmuting horror into love, for the self and others, for the immediate and the removed, and for the void and our place within it. My project of alchemy is ongoing. I'm 43, exploring queerness and polyamory with a deeply loving partner who also adores my tarot reads. My occult community is growing and I'm a valued member of my university department and other communities besides. And in all that happiness, still that fear of hell and the dead breath comes creeping in, icing my thoughts as they reckon with inevitable loss and decay. But as we say in our most holy order, and I am confident that this formula is enough to continue carrying me across chasms to the other side of myself, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. That was his unholiness. Chris Curtis!